Hello everybody, how you doing today? I hope you're having a good day, a good blessed day. It's been a few days since I've been on, but um, anyway, we'll try and get through it, and hopefully my voice will hold out until uh, it gets done. But anyway, we're going to have a lesson today called Just Trying to Get By. I mean, the question comes up, what is the least I can do and still get to heaven? You know, it seems like a lot of people ask this question. And I can tell you right now, honestly, <clears throat> if you're asking this question, I can tell you that you won't make it there. No. I mean, the question lacks the motivation to serve the Lord with the whole heart. It just just want to barely get by. I mean, the question indicates that you cannot let go of the world and put your trust in God. So God warns us that we cannot love the world and still receive his blessings of eternal life. So we're going to talk about some of the bounds and limitations of our Christian liberty and what the Bible teaches about it. And we'll, we'll ask some questions later on, the probing questions, questions to get you to think. So in James 4 and verse 4, it quotes, says, You adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility towards God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. So anyone who is an enemy of God is not going to go to heaven. I mean, that, that's the way it is. Now, 2 John 9 says, anyone who goes too far and does not abide or stay in the teaching of Christ does not have God. The one who abides in the teaching, he has both the Father and the Son. And then in James 4, 8, the admonition is, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. But cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your heart, you double-minded. So, yeah, there, there's conditions have to be met in order us for to draw near to God. We've got to get ourselves in a right relationship with him, and that can only happen is if we diligently seek to serve him with our whole heart. Anybody who tries to seek him with anything less than a whole heart is not going to make it. I mean, that's why Jesus said there be very few that make it to heaven. I mean, so Hebrews 4, 16 says, Let us therefore draw near with confidence to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and may find grace to help in time of need. Now, while we become free from our sins through our obedience to the gospel, we do not have freedom to sin. I mean, some people get this idea. See, many people teach that the grace of God, which is free, overlooks sin. In other words, sin all you want, God's grace is going to cover you. And you can live however you want, God's grace is going to cover you. Folks, that is false doctrine. There's just no other way of saying it. That is false doctrine, and it is a lie perpetrated by Satan to deceive the many. And believe me, when you look at how many people believe this, millions upon millions are being deceived into believing the lie. And, and so, uh, that, that's why it's so sad. Many good people are going to be lost simply because they believed a lie. So, if we have sin in our lives, uh, God just looks and sees Jesus, and thus we can be saved because of the sacrifice of Jesus. And that's what a lot of people teach. And technically, yes, I mean, there, there's an element of truth to this, but, I mean, what they imply is that, well, you can sin, you can live however you want, and if you've called the name of Jesus, then that's all God's going to see. Well, it doesn't work that way, folks. When you read your Bible, and that's what we're commanded to do, is to study. And study with all diligence. I mean, here's a lot of things. Some people just say, well, I'll get on a daily Bible reading schedule. They go through the whole Bible, and then you ask them at the end, well, what did you learn? And you get that you know, that dumb stare, uh, <laughs> I don't, I mean, so, I mean, studying the Bible has a purpose so that we can be approved of God and live in such a way that our behavior, uh, speaks for our, our, our faithfulness. And therefore when our life is over, God will grant us entrance into the kingdom. <clears throat> but if all we do is read without making any application to our lives, without taking the time to learn what we're reading, I mean, it's not going to do us any good. It just doesn't work that way. I mean, you don't get salvation through osmosis. 
I mean, just sitting on the church pew is not going to get you to heaven. I mean, living your life the way God wants you to live it, that's what's going to get you to heaven. And that's the problem. A lot of people, they don't want to go through all that. I mean, they're just content maybe just to warm a pew and think that they've done their duty to God, and so they're okay. All right. It doesn't work that way. See, here's our problem. See, people do not like restrictions placed upon them. We know that's true. And God, by demanding obedience, is restricting what we want to do. And at least that, that's the way many people have done. I've actually had a few people honestly tell me that they're not going to serve a God who demands anything out of them. And so if they have that attitude, there's not a thing I can do for them. I said, well, I'll pray for your soul, but there, there's nothing I can do for you. If you have that type of attitude, you're not going to let God control you, then uh, there's nothing I can do for you. And so I've actually had to tell people that. And, and so uh, God demands the obedience. And basically, when we're obedient, we are told not to do certain things. And of course, he also gives us commands to do certain things. And, and so we, we know that if we do those things God told us not to do, it is sin. If we don't do what God had told us to do, it is sin. So either way, I mean, that, that's why we have to work very hard and be diligent in applying these things to our faith and our life so that we can be uh, measured up, so we can hear those words, well done, good and faithful servant. You got to be a faithful servant. I mean, there's a lot of people consider them servants of God, but they're not faithful and they don't live like they're faithful. They don't do the things that God has asked them to do. And they've just deceived themselves. <clears throat> and the Bible says, be not deceived. I mean, for whatever man sows, that shall he also reap. And that's in Galatians chapter 6, uh, 7 and 8. All right, so that, that's one of our problems. The other problem is we have double standards in our society. We see this all the time, especially when it comes to politics. I mean, if a Republican does something, I mean, just... Uh, you got to get rid of them. You got to impeach them or whatever. If a Democrat does the exact same thing, oh, that's just the way we do things. I mean, so, I mean, there's a double standard always applied where one party gets a pass, the other party gets condemned. And we have double standards, like even in our society sometimes, you know, if a man cheats on his wife, oh, well. But a woman cheats on her husband, they call her a hussy. I mean, it's just that double standard, which is not right. I mean, considering race, a white man does the same thing that a black man does, but they are judged and treated differently. I mean, that's not right. I mean, everybody should be treated the same. And that's what all any of us want. We want to be treated the same. We don't need any special privilege. We don't need anything. We just want to be treated just as fairly as everybody else. I mean, it's like when, when we work and we don't have enough credits to get a full um, Social Security check, but people who cross the border illegally all of a sudden get allowed to collect a full Social Security. That's not fair. That's not right. I mean, I, I, I had a wife who, she, she stayed home and raised the kids. She didn't get any credits. So they, you're not allowed to get Social Security because you don't meet the credits. But here's someone who hasn't worked in at least for the government, put into Social Security for many years, all of a sudden they're getting a full Social Security check. I mean, that's not fair. And so <clears throat> we see that's happened. And people from different cultures, they allow their culture to dictate what is right and wrong. And they don't turn to the Bible to see what the Bible says. So, yeah, that's, that's the problems that we have. And so God has always had limitations. I mean, he's always done this. I mean, he's been graceful, he's been gracious, he's been long-suffering, but yet he still has placed limitations. This started all the way back in Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, From any tree of the garden you may eat freely, but from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat it, from it you shall surely die. So, yeah, I mean, it's been there. The children of Israel, yes, they were given the Ten Commandments as Moses brought them down, but Moses, God also gave them the entire Mosaic Law. 
And there's a whole lot of commands in there, a whole lot of restrictions, a whole lot of rules. And for many of those rules, you break the rules, you get stoned or put to death. And so that, that's what happens here. I mean, that, that was very important. That's why Moses told them, you've got to be careful to do and observe all the words of this law. Not just some of them, but all of them. Because all of God's word is important. And so there were consequences for violating that law. And even with the freedom we have in Christ, we still have limitations. Why? See, like we said earlier, just because you have freedom in Christ does not give you the liberty to sin and think you can get a pass and get away with it. No. I mean, these limitations tell us of the consequences of exceeding the limitations. I mean, that's what happens. We're warned by Paul not to go beyond the scriptures, uh, 1 Corinthians 4, 6. And we're told what happens if we add to the scriptures and take away from the scriptures in Revelation 22, uh, 18 and 19. And so just like there are consequences of getting caught speeding. I mean, think about that. You're driving down the road, you're speeding down the highway, and all of a sudden you see the red lights flashing behind you. Oh, you got caught. But even if you don't get caught, you're still violating the law. And there are consequences of speeding. And while there may not be a law enforcement officer to stop you and give you a ticket, you seem to think, well, I got away with it. Guess what? God knows what you're doing, and he's going to hold you accountable for that. What? Yes, even for speeding in our car, God's going to hold us accountable for that. See, we are to obey the laws of the land as long as those laws do not go against God's laws. Yes, we must obey God rather than man. That doesn't give us permission to ignore the law. And so many want to do that. If nowadays so many ignore the law, and in many cases the government just lets them get away with it, well, if they, if they don't have to obey the law, why should I have to obey the law? And you wonder why we have so much crime and violence in our streets today. I mean, that, and that's the reason. People get, get away with it, and nobody does anything about it. But getting back to our subject, what's the least I can do? We, we, we can ask some questions here. And as we get back to our title, what's the least I can do and still make it to heaven? All right, so we ask the question, what can I do or not do as a Christian and still be pleasing to God? I mean, that is a display of a wrong attitude. I mean, let, let's face it. If our heart, if we don't seek the Lord with our whole heart, if we don't apply everything we can to put God first in our lives, then we're just spinning our wheels and we're deceiving ourselves. All right. All right. So uh, there, there are several questions maybe we should consider. All right. Question first one. Am I a Christian in name only or do I live like I am supposed to? You know, there's some people walk around wearing the name Christian, but they're definitely not living like a Christian should. I mean, you can't tell the difference between them and anybody in the world. I mean, all you have to do is spend time out in the world and see how people behave. And then, you know, what would really surprise you is someone said, oh, I go to church. I mean, sometimes my jaw has just literally dropped. I mean, huh? <laughs> really? You go to church? I mean, people with the foulest mouth, they talk about going to church and, and teaching the young children how to be obedient to God, and what? That, that there's, there's a disconnect there. There's something wrong there. And so we should be asking ourselves, by my actions, am I doing anything to bring glory to God? I mean, that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to let our light shine and cause others to glorify God in everything we, we're, we do. We're supposed to glorify God, First Peter 4, 11. And, and so... We really have to question, am I really serious? Do I really want to go to heaven? Well, everybody's going to say, yeah, I want to go to heaven. Everybody's going to say that, but what is it going to take to get there? And that's not what they're not willing to do. So, honestly, a lot of people, they just talk about it, but they don't have plans of going there. I mean, well, they, they have plans of going there, but they're not going to make it. I mean, so... Uh, 
we ask, we need to ask the question, am I willing to give up all in order to go to heaven? You know, Jesus, Jesus kind of made that point. You got to give it all up for God. I mean, you, you have to uh, make the sacrifices in your own life. You have to change your way of living and doing things. You have to change the way you talk and behave. You have to learn what God wants you to do and start doing those things. So he asked the question, am I willing to grow and develop into a better Christian? You know, some people have gotten to a point where they're a Christian. They've been maybe in the church for 20 and 30 years and they just, whether they realize it or not, just develop this attitude, I don't need to learn anymore. I know enough. I've been faithful. I've been going to church for 20 years, and, and so I don't have to change my ways. I mean, so, I mean, that's the wrong attitude to have. I mean, here, here's a big question here. Will my behavior demonstrate my love for God, or will it demonstrate a friendship with the world? I mean, your behavior, that's the way you live, your lifestyle, everything about you. I mean, so you have to, does, does this demonstrate my love for God? Do people know that I really love God and would really want to serve him? Or am I just like everybody else? Here's a question for a lot of you. And I think some of the younger people probably have this question needs to be directed to them. Do my friends know that I'm a Christian? I mean, chances are, if, they're, if they realize that announcing their Christianity is going to bring about persecution and ridicule and stuff like that, a lot of times they just determine to remain silent. They just go along with the crowd, don't let anybody know uh, what I do on Sundays. I go to church on Sundays. I don't want anybody to know that. They'll start making fun of me or they'll start tempting me and, and I don't think I can uh, hold on to that. Do my friends know that I'm a Christian? Well, if you had the right kind of friends, yes, they would. But if you have the wrong kind of friends, you're probably hiding it from them. See, can I produce any evidence that I'm a Christian? I mean, if, and we've heard the statement many, many times. If you were put on trial for being a Christian, would there be any evidence against you? I mean, so, I mean, that's, that's a question we really need to consider from time to time. Do I live in such a way that I demonstrate my faithfulness, not only to God, but to others? All right. And then ask yourself, can my actions be pleasing to God? Well, only if you're serving him the way he wants, the answer is yes. But if you're not living the way God wants you to live, no, your actions are not pleasing to God. And he's certainly not going to tell you, well done, good and faithful servant just because maybe you've been in the church for 20, 30, 40 years. I mean, your actions speak louder than words. Ask the question, will I bring reproach upon Christ or his church by my lifestyle, by my actions, by my behavior, by my speech? And you might ask yourself the question, have I made any effort to lead others to Christ? I mean, that's a real telltale sign. If you really believe that Christ is Lord and King, you're going to do what he asks you to do and lead others to Christ. All right, so real quickly, where do we need to focus? We need to get our minds off of this, what I can do to barely get by, to making the effort to serve him to the best of our ability. So I'm sure we could ask many more probing questions, but these should be sufficient to make our point. See, the Christian has many responsibilities in our living to be acceptable to God. And we'll just mention a few of them about where our focus should be. In our worship, do we seek to worship God in spirit and truth and honestly from the whole heart? Do we follow the commands and examples of the New Testament? Or do I just occupy a pew and feel good about myself? See, this is where a lot of people appear to be. They occupy the pew, they make sure, oh, I gotta be there Sunday morning, I gotta occupy that pew, and uh, maybe shake the preacher's hand, tell them a good sermon or whatever. But after that, you don't see them, you don't see what they're doing, and you, you some, somehow you might be able to see their social media page, say, whoa, that's not acceptable, that's not right. And so, yeah, do you just occupy a pew? And feel good about yourself or you're really sincerely trying to worship God? You know, maybe in the work. Is it honorable work? 
doesn't allow me time to serve God. You know, some people have have a work that's not honorable. They do things that they shouldn't be doing, and it's not right. And uh, sometimes people get jobs, yeah, they need to work. They need to work overtime, so they have no problem working overtime, maybe missing church. I mean, I even knew a preacher one time, uh, not a preacher in the Church of Christ, but he was a preacher, and every opportunity he got to work, he just told the, the congregation, I have to work this morning, and he didn't show up to services. <laughs> I mean, I don't know why they let him stay a preacher. I, I just don't understand that. Maybe in our recreation, our play, does it distract from serving God? I mean, do I play with fairness towards all? There's something else about this. Sometimes you get out there on the basketball court or the football field or the baseball diamond, and, and sometimes your behavior gets a little rugged and rough and certainly not becoming a Christian. And so... We ask the question, am I obsessed with it to the point of God taking a lower place? I mean, and really, if God, if you're going to push God down to second place, there's nothing in this world that's going to basically make you change your ways, and he's just going to keep going farther down to the list till finally God is the last thing you're thinking about. I mean, selfishness always gets in the way. And consider your speech. Does it build up or does it tear down? I mean, we're told in Ephesians 4, let your speech be um, only for edifying. Don't, don't use the coarse, filthy language, but let your speech be for edifying. And he told the uh, Colossians, let your speech be, as it were, seasoned with grace. So, so you can speak the good words at the, at the moment. I mean, is your speech wholesome? I mean, would it be all right to use the language you use with, among your friends and in the world could you bring that same speech into the church build, building? I mean, that's a, I mean that, that's the question. Is it wholesome? Does it build up? Or is it offensive? I mean, would, would, would my speech be offensive? Well, let, let's face it, granted, speaking the truth is offensive to those not willing to live by it. Okay, in that case, if you're speaking the truth, it is offensive to them. But you know what? If you're speaking the truth, that's what God wants you to do. And you better be doing it. And maybe you consider the focus in our dress. Do we dress modestly and, and instead of uh, demonstrating, well, we belong to the world and we're, we're going to show off our bodies. We're, we're going we're gonna to dress in such a way that's provocative and get people to lust after us and things like that. Do you belong to the world or do you belong to Christ? And do you cover yourself up or do you expose yourself? I mean, these are all considered in our dress and how we dress and, and behave. You know, there's so many things we could consider. You know, our associates. What kind of people do we hang around? Our places of recreation. Where do we do it? Our habits. I mean, our habits we keep doing over and over. And just about everything that people see as you. Everything they know. When, when they hear your name, they associate you with things. That's how we remember things. When you hear the name, I mean, people associate, okay, where do I know that name from? Yes, I know that name from church, okay? I know that name from the basketball court. I know that name from work or something like that. I mean, so everything that's about you, everything about you, I mean, that's how people are going to know you. And so serving God certainly has limitations in all these areas. And we need to know what those limitations are and make sure we don't violate those limitations because there are consequences to violating the law of God. So the question, are you trying to serve God better than well enough, good enough? Or are you just trying to get by? Folks, I'll give you a warning right now. If you're just trying to get by, doing the least you can do and still make it to heaven, I'll guarantee you, according to God's word, you're not going to make it to heaven. That, that may sound harsh, but that's the honest truth. And if anybody wants to challenge that, yeah, I'll be glad to talk to you about it. So if you have any questions, just ask the questions. We'll discuss these things. All right, so that's going to be our lesson for today. Consider these thoughts, and Lord willing, be back again with another lesson. Bye-bye for now.